I do. Wonderful. Okay, let's see what's going on. Sunday, Sunday. we will have our very last uh, blast in the park. Actually, it's at a house in Tinta. So Yay! it's going to be at 3 o'clock at Tinta, completely free, and we just invite everybody to come. It's, it's at 105 fun. 4th Street, Tinta, Minnesota. Wow, that was good. <laughs> That's I make all the flyer that videos. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Look at the cars. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then, of course, if you're in the area, we invite you to come and worship with us Sunday morning. Yes. And that'll be, yeah. It's we so start fun. 10.30 a.m. with Continental Delicious Continental Breakfast. Continental Breakfast. I mean, Woo! you can't go wrong. And it's I'm good. I'm in. Yeah. You gotta wonder, would I serve God if they didn't have Continental Breakfast? Or do I even have to think about that? Yeah, yeah, you know. That's mm. whole purpose in life. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so that's the scoop, and it's pretty fun. Yes. So let's start. We're going to go to John 8. Cindy says hi. Elizabeth hey. from Massachusetts. Hey. And Gloria. Gloria. Look at how sweet she is. Hey, you guys. Love you for doing this. You are Aww. so sweet. Well, we oh, love you what? for joining us, Gloria. Yes. yes. Thank you. Love wow. it. John what? John 8. That's great. Yeah, it's really great. Ah, oh, Shana, hi. Shana. Hey. If. We live in, we're going to talk about, like, God and our feelings and problems, because those comes up. So if we live in reaction to the problem, that means that that problem has had an influence on your thought life and behavior. So I would really like to get feedback on problems, because I don't know if it's because our church right now, for the rest of August, is doing a no complaining, no murmuring, no complaining, being a positive thing. And if that's why things have been amped up, problem situations, stress, pressure, I mean, just every opportunity to complain. Or is this just like the times right now where, oh my gosh, it's just amazing. So I would like some feedback. So Cindy and Elizabeth and Gloria and Shayna, what do you guys think about that? Are you guys facing stuff right now? You don't have to say what it is, but you can just say yes or no. Yes, and I, I think am. another thing is we're constantly learning right now to change our thought patterns, to mm -hmm. keep our minds on yeah. who I am, who's in me, who I'm one with. So the battleground is the mind. Yeah. So, of course, the devil's like, wait a second, you're trying to take territory back, which mm. I've had for so long. Right. That now he's going to get mad and try to attack more. Well, but guess yeah. what? We have bigger weapons than That's that. Think right. about this. In Isaiah, I think it's 26 or 23, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Well, think of the opposite. Yeah. yeah. If your mind is on the problem or on the fears, yes. you're going to be in tur turmoil all the time. That's even really just, true. Even just yesterday, I was doing some extra studying on, like, imagination and getting your mind renewed. And last night, falling asleep to work this morning, I had a time. I was thinking <laughs> of everything in life. I'm like, what is the deal? <laughs> life. Oh, I've been studying on this. Get ready to practice it. Mm -hmm. See? Oh, that's that's exactly right. Uh, Gloria says, yes, always growing. Yeah. What a great way yeah. to think about it. Yes. And it's just like, let's say you've been working out for a long time, but then you change your workout to do a little bit different workout routine, and you think, oh, well, I'm, I'm fit, I'm active. You change just that little bit, you're going to feel that the next day. Yeah. You're going to be like, wow, this is sore. What in the world? I've been working out for so long. No, it's because you're training a different muscle now. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's what I think we're going through is we're training different oh, faith muscles. Yes. And we're retraining our brain. Yeah. So our default isn't, oh my goodness, I'm living in reaction to this problem. Because yeah. then we know that has been influencing our thought life. Yeah. Hmm. And now we're seeing it more. I've done, wow. You can even see it even on social media where you accidentally watch like a workout video. Or you watch like my favorite finds on Amazon. Now everything on Facebook is your favorite finds on Amazon. Yeah. You're like, what in the world? It's true. That's how life can be. Yeah. Where God will bring you on a journey, and now everything you see is that. <laughs> Have you ever done that? I've done that. Yeah, that's true. You know what's amazing with that? So we went on this girl trip, and we went into Wisconsin. Just a little ways into Wisconsin. We went to this little teeny tiny town. All of a sudden on Facebook, I had all this Wisconsin stuff. 
Well, yeah, I've taken mm-hmm. Dad's phone, and I've said, I don't know, I said something goofy, some, you know, hobby or something, and all of a sudden he gets ads on his computer. Mm-hmm. What? So they're, they're, See? they're wow. keeping tabs on what we're interested in. That's and amazing. They sell, where, you know. And the wow. devil's watching. He's seeing. He's watching. He's finding those little buttons he can try, but if yeah. you get rid of all the buttons, then there's nothing for him to touch anymore. Yes. So people live in reactions to problems. And then they base their whole prayer life on that, and then they spiritualize it and call it intercession. Oh. If you're only praying the problems, yeah. you're not going to get too far. You're just, yeah, you're not going true. to that end result now. You're just, it's kind of like making confessions in faith. You can make a confession. Let's say, I hurt my elbow. So instead of saying, I have no pain, I have no pain. Well, that's not speaking the end result you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to say, I'm healed, I'm whole, I'm one with him, I'm now healer you're focusing in me. on the pain. Yeah. yeah. Some people's prayers that's good. will zap their faith. Lord, you know how big this problem is, and you know what they've done to me, and it's such a burden, and then, you know, zaps their, zaps their faith. So faith is voice activated. Yep. Yeah. Is that amazing? Yeah. Faith is voice. So when you're voicing that pain thing all the time, I don't have pain, I don't have pain, I don't have pain, you're actually activating your faith in that pain, for that pain more. It's kind of like if you're doing cardio. You want to make time seem really long, do cardio or do a plank because that (laughs) will make time go really slow. (laughs) But in the middle of that, let's say you're going for a walk and you're power walking and all you're saying is, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. I'm not. What are you focusing on? I'm so tired. Yeah. Where instead you say, I'm energetic. I have all the energy I need. Yeah. I walk and I don't grow weary. I run and I don't faint. Yeah. If you think on that, that's the end result you're speaking. Mm-hmm. That's so good. I heard Bill Winston say, and it's just like, <laughs> like shabam. He said that you speak the end result. You don't have to know any of the details that's right. how that's going to get done, yeah. but you know that that end result is going to be that's there. So good. That's so yeah. And that's faith. That's all you have to do. A king decrees it. He doesn't care how it gets done. No. He just wants it done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As yeah. quickly, efficiently, and just done. Oh, I just heard this. Who was this? Oh, I think it was Andrew Womack. I just listened to it this morning, and he said that when Jesus spoke to the fig tree... You know, uh, they didn't see anything at first, and it wasn't until the next day, and then all of a sudden it was, look at the fig tree. It withered up from the roots up. He said, when you speak to it, don't ever let the devil, don't ever let your flesh even think that nothing is happening. Yeah. Because it happens at the root. Yeah. I, and we know wow. that. But to hear that, and he said, he said when they came to the fig tree, he said he researched fig trees because he thought, wait a minute. This doesn't even seem fair because it said it wasn't the time yeah. of the the fig tree or something like that. But he said what he researched was the figs come before the leaves. Oh. So if there's leaves, it means there's already figs on there. Oh. And and so it said that uh, it said something about that it had just leaves on there. And so the hmm. figs were supposed to be on there. Yeah. Anyways, Jesus spoke to it. And so he said when those things come, he said you have to speak to it. That's right. Don't let it go by without speaking. So if you're saying, I'm not in pain, you're not speaking to it. No. You're agreeing with it. Yeah. You're, you're, Your focus is wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. So so then say again what you would say. So, for what? For pain. like pain. So let's say your elbow hurts. Yeah. Don't say, no pain, my elbow doesn't hurt, my elbow doesn't hurt. You would say... Praise God, I'm healed. Praise God, I praise God that I'm one in Him. I have the healer in me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Anything wrong in me is right. Yeah. yeah. You speak that stuff, and, and then you can keep going. You know, Mark eleven twenty three. Jesus said to speak to the problem. To it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but you don't, strong. you don't sit there. Healed. If you keep speaking to the problem again, you know you can speak to it again. But if you keep saying it over and over, you don't believe those first times did anything. Yeah. That's that's really true. Yeah. I mean, did it work or not? Yeah. It said they would. It, Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three that you would have whatever you said if you believe what you said and you don't doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's exactly yeah. right. And you can do that with any problem. Speak to your finances. I'm prosperous. I live in abundance. I I attract opportunities that make millions. Yeah. He puts me over in life. God gives me power to get wealth. That's speaking the end result. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I, I never really told this because you know, I didn't, you know, I thought, well, it wasn't like a physical thing. 
But um, we had people in our church give testimony, and Natalie videoed them, and we sent them to Chad Gonzalez when we had Chad Gonzalez meetings here. He wanted to have the, uh, some testimonies of people that got healed at the meetings. And so I didn't really say anything, but um, at the meetings, uh, he was, it was towards the, uh, towards the end of the meeting, kind of, and he started just proclaiming and just, you know, saying this, and it was just charge. And so I so just, I, I wanted to stand up, and I thought, okay, nobody else is standing up. And I thought, you know what, I'm here, and if the Holy Spirit is moving me to stand up, I'm yeah. getting it. Yeah. So I stood up, John stood up, and, and uh, you know, I just raised my hands. I just closed my eyes so I wasn't distracted by any, you know, anything. And all of a sudden, it was like, whoosh, there it was, and both John and I, just started jumping up and down. John took Did off. Did you start running? He started running. Yeah. I ran. I ran. I ran, and ways. somebody said, "You go." Or <laughs> you go. So they knew my name. See, and okay, I thought, met. "Well, get up and go with you know." Yeah. Anyways, so I didn't realize. Kind of reminded me of your testimony with worry. You know, when you, I didn't realize until um, I knew something happened, but I didn't quite know what it was because it wasn't like a like my finger or my arm yeah, or, yeah. or something. You know. So it wasn't until after, and I noticed, see, I grew up where my mom uh, was a professional worrier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the way she showed you she loved you. She just, you know, and if you didn't worry, then you didn't love her. I mean, there was this huge thing. And when you grow up with that, uh, it's going to affect you. Mm-hmm. And and so I, um, I got free of that. Yeah. And I didn't realize everything that was involved in it. But I have to honestly say... And this is really putting it out there, you know, as a pastor, you want people to think, oh, I've got it all together, you know, and, 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 uh, but I dealt with that almost every night, Hmm. almost every night. I had to resist it. I had to come against it. I was face to face with it. Many times I was sensitive when other people had that. Hmm. And so many times, you know, I was led to pray for somebody else, usually people in my church. Or, you know, people yeah. that I'm close to, uh, to be free from that or to be delivered or, you know, so that they could even sleep because they weren't able to sleep. Wow. And so, yeah. And so I used to just when I would wake up during the night to use a restroom or, uh, and I would just have this kind of dis- this loathing of, okay, now I have to deal with this. Mm. And it w- would be almost every night, and it's gone. Oh, Praise God. And it's gone. I heard, was it Wigglesworth? He said if a church loses its shout, that they lose their power. They lose it. And he used to say that That's no man true. can doubt if he'll learn to shout. See? There's something Woo! about shouting, yeah, proclaiming, yep. rejoicing, that will just, it, it, it takes your uh, mentality yeah. under, under chain, you know, under control. And you can doubt. I mean, you can doubt, but you can shout that doubt out. That's yeah. true. I mean, I've said this before, but it's it's so simple. But the simple things are really what put you over in the kingdom yeah. of God. Kenneth Hagin, he would look at his problems, and he would quote that, First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And he'd start just shouting over it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. He, most times he said he would look up and the problem was gone. Yeah. Praise God. He what? dealt with worry. Yeah. yeah. He got his focus off of the problem and onto yeah. the end result and onto the problem solver. I think, and I'm just really being led by the Holy Spirit right now because I really believe this is what the Holy Spirit is saying right, right now during this, is there are P- Christians who have been in meetings even at church during the worship during the word of god during ministry that the holy spirit was trying to get them to stand up get them to raise their hand get them to respond to him give him something yeah and they didn't do it and so they missed out yeah they missed out one thing that happened when we did start running or you know that just that huge thing was um I remember doing something right at the end where I kicked, and I went like that. And I thought, well, I was really embarrassed afterwards. I sat down, and I thought, oh, my gosh, <laughs> that was really weird. But you know what? That's when it was. Whoa. That's Whoa. when I, you know, it's like you release your faith. It's like you release your, it's kind of like that touch. touch on it. Yeah. 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 And, um, and I that really so believe we had a lot of people there. And I, as far as I know, because I didn't look around anything, I think John and I were the only ones. Yeah, I think so. And, and I remember Kelly said later, I wish I would have got up. Yeah. You know, I when the anointing yeah. is there to do that and you step out, you, there's a blessing. Yeah. There's something. Well, first thing is you notice, if you really t- pay attention, something that's, that, that 
will push back or your, your resistance comes right up when you want to do those things. Yeah. And then there's embarrassment. You break through those. Yeah. You, they seem big that, oh, I really don't want to do it. But they're very frail. Yeah. And there's a lot of areas in life you need to break those things. Yes. yes. But then there's a blessing. And sometimes you do those things and you'll go, wow, you know, something will get on you when you do that, something good. Yeah. So Bethel, so Jen Johnson, she's married to uh, uh, Bill Johnson's son who used to lead worship at Bethel, but they write all these amazing songs and they're out there. She uh, leads the, uh, the worship and everything. So I just heard her tell a little testimony today. It was just a short little thing. But she said when she was first starting out as a Christian that, you know, just, just loved to worship, she wouldn't move. <laughs> and she would have this, like, raise your hands. She thought, I am not raising my hands. Nobody's raising their hands right now. I am not raising my hands. And then she went through that for a period of time. And then, and then another time that she was at worship, then it was like, raise your hands. And she just thought, I mean, it was just raise your hands, yeah. you know. Yeah. And she thought, I can't raise my hands. So she just purposely put her arms down, oh, no. you know, and just thought, I'm not going to. And then this whole thought came, what would happen if you raised your hands? Yeah. Why do you even care what anybody even thinks? You're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on the move of God because you're not responding to the Holy Spirit. And so she thought, I'm raising my hands. She had this whole the whole chatter thing. I'm raising my hands. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm going to do this unto the Lord. I'm only going to think about him. I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> and she raised her hands, and she said, set wow. her free. Set her free. Hallelujah. And look what she, how many songs she has written. Yeah. Look at how many. She's up there worshiping, and she's just free. She worships with all of her heart. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just, it's. I was watching just this morning some of her new songs that they had come out with and stuff. It's just so blessed me. It's mm-hmm. so blessed me. We are missing out. Yes, no more we are missing out. And one thing I was set free from was fear of people. Yeah. yeah. Fear of people. Totally set me free. Like, man, praise God. Now, it doesn't mean that you're rude or, you know, but to be able to yeah. respond to the Lord. If the Lord can lead you and you respond in raising your hands or something small, it makes it easier to respond and yield in other places yeah. and to be led. Yeah. And if the farther God is able to do those things and that they don't hinder you and you know he trains you and you get I remember being little and being in church and thinking it was a big deal to raise my hands. Yeah. Especially, you know, somebody might see me, somebody yeah. might think I'm weird. Those are such small things and good yeah. things to get over. I'm so glad I'm not still there. Now, there's mm-hmm. some things that I'm still working on in that area. Yeah. But <clears throat> I'm, we're still moving forward. Yes. And you get to the point where God can say, go lay hands on that person. Yeah. And you're ready. Yeah. And you're able. God's able to have you do. Or go, you know, something that you, out of the ordinary, and God can use you. And, you know, if, if it's something weird and you don't get results, sure, you might have missed it. But, hey, I'd rather miss it. And still, you know, be able to have That's God right. lead me mm-hmm. yes. than not do anything. It's kind of like Peter. He walked on the water farther than anybody else. And you know what? He sank, but he still walked farther than anybody else. Man, Nobody you, you else out there. He rights later on with those yeah. disciples. <laughs> yeah. We talked about that. See? Yeah, you sank. Yeah, but you didn't get out of the boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we had the Chad Gonzalez meetings, and I got free there. And I didn't really realize what had happened because we went right into the teen camp. That was the best worship. I felt the most freedom yes. in leading worship, the most right on, the hardest worship we've ever done, putting it together and piecing songs and everything that we've ever done ever in all six years that we led worship for camp. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. yeah. And when you step out like that, God will meet you and there'll be grace. Yes. That's why it says humble yourself. Yeah. The proud who don't get grace because they're like, no, what are people gonna think? Who oh. cares? We're already weird. <laughs> you think about Kenneth Hagin <laughs> and God. We do weird stuff all the time, and now raising your hands in church—that's weird. <laughs> you wait till God tells you to punch somebody in the stomach. Are you, you know, you oh. think that he's just gonna—that's gonna be the first thing you yield? Uh, you man. know, that's kind of like David out there. He had to go through some and build up wow. to that giant. That giant wasn't the first thing that he yeah. stood on the covenant with God. There were yeah. all those things leading up to that. There were all things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the devil has no right to influence your agenda. 
He has no right to do that. Jesus never lived in reaction to the devil. Mm. He lived in response to the Father. That's good. Because That's good. if you live in reaction to the devil, now what motivates you is the devil and not the goodness of God. Because now you're just going after the problem here, problem there. You're just thinking about, well, then what do people think about me here? Instead of, God wants me to do this. Instead of, who cares what they think? Yeah. God wants me to do this, yeah. so I'm going to do it. Yeah. Because yeah. guess what? When you get to heaven, nobody's going to care anyways. Yeah. You know the majority of people that you're that we're like thinking, oh, what are they gonna think of me? They envy you when you step out. Yeah. Yeah. They're, oh. they're like, wow, I wish I was as free as them. Exactly. I remember this is a really silly story. So long time ago, I I don't know, I was alone and this new song come out and I like just it was my jam for a while. And it was like a worship song and the people in there are just dancing and free. And so I was alone in my room. <laughs> and I'm like getting into this, so I start jumping around, and you would not believe how hard it was to be by yourself and let loose. And wow! Who cares? <laughs> so I'm like, this is not good. I'm so tight and just like <laughs> embarrassed to be alone, really. So I let loose, and I was like, Woo! It up. Praise God! You done that? Yeah. I'm doing in the kitchen every Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Why <laughs> is that? That's just shows. That's the devil. I don't. Yeah. I don't think that's worship music. <laughs> Yeah. I've heard some. <laughs> so let's go to John 8 and verse 32. Uh, Gloria says, I actually felt someone pulling me to go forward to the front of the church at 18. 18. Oh, that's an age of, you know, you don't want to do anything in front Awkward. of people. Right. Like my feet were going with or without me. Whoa. It was so powerful. Wow. I love that. That is amazing. There's nobody in heaven thinking to themselves, that's man. That's right. I, I'm so glad that I didn't embarrass myself and I didn't raise oh, it. Nobody in heaven is saying that, but there are, I'm sure there's multitudes saying, I'm so glad I, I obeyed God. Yeah. I'm so glad that I did what I was prompted. I'm so glad I went with what was inside of me yeah. and did that thing. Yeah. Praise God. And when you know who you are and you know that that's God speaking to you, you're not going to question that as much. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to really know who you are and what you have. So John 8.32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So when you know the truth, which is Jesus, the highest form of reality that exists, he's the way, the truth, and life, uh, the Passion Translation says the true reality, then that will make you free when you yeah. know that. Yeah. Then you know who you are. So now let's go to Philippians 4 and verse 5. If Jesus were to let those disciples down one time, oh, they wow. would have reason to question him. But oh, he yeah, never so he he followed through. And he, he, I mean, he was, they could trust him to the point where Peter would step out of a boat. Right? Yeah. Oh, I can't tell you how many people have told me um, that uh, they have sat behind Norma. <laughs> and uh, and they were stiff as a board, these people. that They were new to the church. So they were just stiff, you know, and never experienced anything like that before. And they were so blessed because Norma, she just dances yeah. and she just, you know, enjoys the worship and she's just, yeah. And they're so blessed that they always sit behind her. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I yeah. love that. that. See, and yes. what's happening is it's not just the person that's, yeah. that's up in the front doing the music that's leading. Everyone's no. leading by yeah. responding to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They influence the worship. That, yeah. works, with, that works with faith, too. Yes. Man, you step out in faith, and there's people around you, and they see what it brings. That, that emboldens them to do yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Well, I think of Brianna, because this is her second year that she's come to teen camp, and the <laughs> teens at camp, they worship, they raise their hands, they're really into it. So this year, she really got into it. Yeah. So now, at church now, she's raising yeah. her hands, Praise she's God. worshiping. Woo! So she sits by all the little kids that we pick up on the bus. She helps with Shane and sits by them. So now one of the little kids, he saw her raising her hands. So he kind of did it, kind of like, what is this? I don't know. So she influenced him. Yes, so now he's God. doing it. So you never know who's watching That's you. Right. To be inspired, not to make fun yes. of. Yep. But just do it when it's heartfelt and it's genuine. Mm -hmm. People will be moved by that. That's so good. People want to yes. be moved by passion. People are yeah. attracted to passion. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Philippians 4 and verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
let your requests be made known unto God. And then, after you do those steps, <laughs> then the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Not wow. just say, oh, I thought of it once. Think on them constantly. Yeah. Fill your yes. mind with it. Yes. The message says, think the best, not the worst. Yes. yes. How beautiful. simple is that? The beautiful and not the ugly. Wow. Ooh. I think, too... A lot of times when we're in the faith movement and stuff, is we get so focused on believing God for stuff, and we should. That's amazing. But then, in the meantime, we get really discontent with what we have right now. Mm -hmm. And, no, there's a balance between, yeah. yes, I'm believing God for this, I'm excited, it's my desire, but don't lose and just keep your focus on what I don't have, what I don't have, yeah. what I don't have. Look yeah. at all the things you do have. Yes. Yeah. And then you remember, oh my gosh, God is so faithful. He's come through every single time. And then that gives your gives you a faith boost that he's going to do it again. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and he's going to knock your socks off, bless Woo! you. Yeah. Like, out of the blue, just because he can. Awesome. Yeah, and yeah. there is that balance. It's that fine line where you're kind of dancing where I'm thankful with what I have, but I know, God, you have more. Yeah. But yet, you're still thankful what yeah, you and live to the fullest with what you have right now. Don't yeah. be like, oh, well, this and this and this has to change first. Then I'll give it my all. Yeah. yeah. No, you're never going to come to that if you're waiting for that. Right. Yeah. I, that's I've right. heard that scripture uh, that Paul said. I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. I heard somebody say one of the translations says, "I've learned to be independent of circumstances." Ooh, mm -hmm. that's good. You know, you get home, and or uh, let's say some kid gets home, and the mom uh, goes, "Where's daddy?" And, Oh, daddy's in the other room. He's down. Oh, why? Oh, daddy had a late, uh, he was laid off at work. Well, guess what? Daddy's not very spiritual. Hmm. <laughs> but something in the natural made him get sad. You know, spiritual things need to be as real to us or yeah. more real than mm -hmm. natural things. Yeah. I heard it also That's say independent this. Independent of circumstances. So yeah. Good. Independent. Like that doesn't move you. Yeah. Yeah. I heard it this way that you're, it's like when you're traveling across the country so let's say you're traveling from Minnesota to Florida, and you get to Iowa, and you're like, you're happy to be in Iowa, but don't stop there. You're not done yet. Still, huh? You're still, you're enjoying the journey, yeah. but you haven't gotten to the goal yet, but you're going to enjoy every state. I'm content in whatever state I'm in, every but don't state. stop there. Just keep going. And really, when you're standing in faith, you're not supposed to be focusing on what you don't have. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be focusing on the Word of God yeah. and the Word that God has given you to stand on. Yeah. So yeah. the minute, because you know, there's stuff that we're all believing God for, and I was like, Lord, where, when, <laughs> why, how? Yeah. And he's like, why are you focusing on all the things you don't have? And I thought, thank you, Lord. I want a new perspective. You know what's really cool is uh, in a situation, it's so easy to think of the, the worst stuff, you know, the negative or the things that aren't exactly the way you want it mm -hmm. or whatever. Why then is it so hard to just think of the positive? Just think of the positive. Think of the good things. Think of that, you know, and why can't that come forward in the file mm -hmm. of our mind? You know, I Default. think it's because we, like, live in such a negative realm here yeah. that we have to have... We have to practice heaven's reality, practice the life of God, the love of God, you know, the peace of God, the goodness of God, good. and purpose to bring that forward, and then to stay there, to keep that clicked in so that it gets automated, is thankfulness. Yeah. Thankfulness. Because yes. you've got to be thankful for something. Yeah. And so when you say those things you're thankful for, it keeps it first and foremost. Have you ever met people? There are people that are just always happy. Yeah. They're just always happy. We met a lady when we used to do a Bible study in town here at um, the senior uh, apartments. And she was so happy all the time. Mm -hmm. She was thankful. She was happy about everything. And she always said it. Oh, this looks so delicious. Oh, that was so fun. Oh, this is... And it was just little things. Oh, it's so nice to sit here with everybody and, and to visit. Thank wow. you so much. for yeah. It was just constantly... Huh. I find 
finally I sat with her. I thought, I'm sitting by her this time because I want to grub off on this. And I said to her, what did you used to do? Oh, she said, I used to have the most wonderful job. I worked for, uh, it wasn't like a nursing home, but it was kind of like that. But she went into people's homes. Oh, wow. Yeah, and helped people. Like a home health nurse? Yeah, like a home health person. And she said she just loved it. And I thought, okay, that's, that's one area that probably would not be the job that I would pick. But I thought, but that's in me. Yeah. yeah. Because he's in me. Yeah. So I've got the, pa- the passion yes. of Jesus. I've got the long suffering. I've got the goodness of God. I've wow. got the love of God. I've got the kindness of God. Yeah. And and we need to get that automated. Yeah. Get Wasn't that. she like 98 years old? She, she was. was in the best health. She was, she was in fabulous. the best yeah. health. Yeah. And judging and, by her words, she had cultivated a lifestyle yes. of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yes. And it even says here, with thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. We have to do that on purpose. Contend to do that. Make it a priority. Yeah. Remember to do yes. that. Keep our thoughts on, you know, what am I thinking? What am I th- Instead of, man, this is the worst day, think yeah. of, how has God blessed me today? Yeah. And when you think of it in the negative like that, you're thinking, me, you're thinking of that alone. Not in union with Christ. Not being wow. one with him. You're thinking, wow. this is the worst thing that's happened to me. Guess who's in you? Yeah. Yeah. Christ. Mm-hmm. Your life is not your own. And what you know, what you know, when you know who you are, whose you are, who's in you, when you know that, what you know insulates you from from the conflict around you. Yeah. It insulates mm-hmm. you. That's what this is saying. The peace of God will mount guard over your hearts and minds Yes, through Christ Jesus. When it says think, one translation is fix your mind. Can I just say one more thing about that? Isn't it interesting how you'll be sitting, you know, at a table or on Facebook and somebody does a negative thing, you know, or, oh, this has been such, or, you know what I mean? It's just like a bad situation where, and it's the negative thing. And it's so easy for everybody to chime in with that. You'll sit at the table and it just, it just like flows, just Mm -hmm. naturally flows. And, but have you ever sat at a table or on a Facebook thing, and they say, oh my gosh, isn't this just the most amazing day? This is like the most blessed day. There's just so, so much to be thankful for. Crickets. Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. And how come that doesn't roll? And you know what's really funny about that? People will leave you. It's like, And even some people will get mad at you because you're pointing out that, and they don't want that pointed out. They want to stay in this place. And it's like, oh my you know God! What, so what sets us apart as being Christians? You know what? When they're you say they're more developed in negative than in the positive. They've cultivated a lifestyle. Oh, of complaining. Oh my gosh! And you know what? That's not that's not saying bad about anybody because we can all be oh, cultivated yeah. in the negative. Yeah, because I mean, just the way we were raised, just the environment, just, and that's the natural yeah. flow of the world is negative. And we, when you're doing the thankfulness and positive, it's going against that natural flow. And yeah. you're like, wait, I don't like yeah. that. That's How hard. How long have they worked at that being negative? Yeah. How long have that has that been normal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, Josh uh, Gomez was talking about. If you, you, you can tend to go to something familiar oh. instead of something beneficial because it's mm-hmm. familiar. It makes yes. it feel safe and yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but here's the cool thing. We can change. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Because we're filled with the other. Yeah. The other stuff, like you said, we're doing without him. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's just, we're doing it, yeah, we're like the orphan, the survival mode, yes. the doing it, the sinner. Yeah. Really, the unsaved. That's not us. And it doesn't have to be hard. It's only hard if you think it's going to be hard. See? When we got saved, we got the mind of Christ. We were yeah. changed. Yes. It's easy yes. now. Jesus said, yes, my yoke is easy. Yes. My burden is light. That's why it's so important to know what we have, who we are, what Jesus gave us, all these things. Because when we know that, it's going to insulate us. And yes. just to clarify on that, you know, okay, oh, I, I'm just going to spend time with Jesus. And you sit there and you go, you know, I was I was uh, going to do some cleaning in my room, put some clothes away. And so what? I found what? on my phone, I had a, a preacher. And it's actually not a very enthusiastic preacher. Don't really, never heard of him. I can't even tell you his name. But he was preaching on the In Him Ooh. scriptures. Oh. And I just skipped to the part where he was going each of the In Him scriptures. And I just let that play. 
Because those are what belong to me, specifically, mm. in this wow. dispensation. Yes, in, in Christ, him. we're in more Christ. than conquerors. Yes. I'm a new creation in Christ. Mm. And, you know, it's easy, but it's not automatic. Yeah, that's it's right. It's up to us mm. to build that. It, yes. You have to work, because once you learn something to change that, you've got to work ten times as hard yeah. to get that thought process changed. And to yeah. aim, yeah. you got to point yourself the right direction. And you, I mean... It, it can be difficult, but it's simple. Yeah. It's simple. Mm. You put the word in. Yeah. And it's such a cliche, but it's so true. You've got to meditate on that and yeah. make that a part of you. Yeah. So if you're, let's say, because we can be addicted to things. We can be addicted to Jesus. Yeah. We can be addicted to the word of God. We can be addicted to negative. We can be, yes. we are habitual people. That's how we're created. And it's a good thing. I mean, yeah. it can be bad. We can choose that it can be bad. But we can choose that to flow with the Lord, flow with the Holy Spirit, and make it so amazing that it can be automated. Here's the deal. If somebody is addicted to something, let's say alcohol, drugs, let's say cigarette, whatever, and you free, and you've been, you know, people have been on Facebook and said, this is my 15th year of being, mm. you know, free, and you're like, praise the Lord, congratulations, you know. What would happen if they would take one more drink? Yeah. What would happen if they would go back to their stomping grounds, mm. back to their friends that mm. are still in that? What would happen if they spent one night with them or one afternoon or one, you know, what would happen? Yeah. Would they would they have to go through the whole process again? Would they be would they be totally off, you know, and go with that? And that's what we have to be watchful mm -hmm. because we have made, we could say, I've been saved for 21 years. Praise God. Oh, yeah. I'm filled with this life. I'm free from worry. I'm free from fear. I'm free from sin. I'm free from hallelujah. Yes. But then recognize there's one step back. Yeah. You know, it's one step back and we have to be so watchful because we can be so um, ignorant or, or easily deceived thinking, well, you know, I can be with that sinner. I can just, you know, have be a glass of wine. Negativity. or I can, Yeah, I can be around negativity. Yeah. I can be, Imagine if we put, this is my 12th year of being negative free or positive <laughs> only or no complaining. That'd be amazing. That would be wow. amazing. I know about that. You know what it would yeah. be like? It would be like when you tell people that you've been how many years without sugar or flour. Oh. They would look at you the same way because... It's as natural to people as sugar and flour is being yeah. negative. It's Ouch. just as it's everywhere, and it's in everything. Yeah. And you've got to work so hard to cut that out. But once you get a system that works, there's no going back. Gotta really and you know this actually is easy once you get everything set right. Yeah, it is such a good example. You cultivate a lifestyle of because Thanksgiving. Because Thanksgiving <laughs> and being positive and thinking the best, that's the natural flow of God. It's yeah. So and good. we yeah. were made to be in that yes. flow. Yes. But we've, through time and growing up and through life, we've told ourselves, well, no, the negative is natural. It's not. That's unnatural to us now yes. that we've been saved. That's yeah. right. We've been completely changed. That is changed. so below us. Yes. That is so, let's don't look down. No. No. It says look up. That's yeah. Right. It yep. says look up. I'd rather set the bar high like Kennedy yes. used to. I'd rather set the bar high and just get half of it than set it at nothing and get the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? Set your affection, your attention, set your yeah. eyes above. Yeah. So and when we're seated That's with so him. Right. Yeah. Right. And when you get that right... It's kind of like when you're inside your house and a storm comes. You're safe. You're in there. There might be twigs tinking at the window. Ross, a cow might go by and you're like, oh, looks pretty bad out there. But you're inside your house. Yeah. See? That, when you know who you are, yeah. when you know what you have, yeah. it insulates you. Yeah. When you become so influenced and insulated by the mind and union of Christ, Nothing can harm you anymore. The right. name of the Lord is a strong tower. Woo! The righteous run in yes! and they're safe. Right. It, you know, if we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that's what we do. Yeah. yeah. When's the last time you ran into the name of the Lord <laughs> <laughs> for safety? Yeah. Wow. People run into their basement. People run to the bank. Or people run to the doctor. But when when did you run to the name of the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny because um, as as we lead the worship at church. Um, sometimes 
when we start the worship, uh, you can just feel uh, some people are just like uncomfortable mm -hmm. or they just like the walls yeah. just go up and it just, and, and the lie is, uh, and we all, let's just be honest. We all have certain walls. We have not all just arrived totally free yeah. worshiping the Lord. You know, there are some th things, barriers. There are some, I mean, we've broken through many of them, but yeah. we need to still break yeah. them more. And, uh, and so just think about what God said. He inhabits mm. the praises wow. of his people. Now, here's the deal. Why would he say that he's already in us? Mm. Wow. Why would he have to go yeah. that far and say he inhabits huh. the praises of his people? That's Isn't it just amazing? Yeah. yeah. It's just another another part of him that comes. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's just another he just keeps I mean, we have not we have not entered into that. I, yet. It's kinda like God is a parent. And he's teaching us to walk. And there'll be all these different corridors. And he says, here, this is right here. Okay, bring it to me. No, no, you come. You do this. You See? come. You come. And you, you kind of waddle in there. And you're like, I don't know if I want to do that. But it's such a blessing when you get through those yeah. areas. Yeah. Yes. Think of how many areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you said, that resistance. You want you want to hear resistance. You, you teach on people's kids and right living. Or you teach on <laughs> finances. Wow, resistance, walls go up. Oh. I'm in here, don't come in. Change, ew, I hate go, change. Go away. <laughs> and we've been taught that so many things are either hard, not fun, mm -hmm. um, you know. Being uh, a Christian's a bummer. He, being healed is hard. Well, hard. I've even heard, uh, I've even talked to people, uh, this is a long time ago, but I've even talked to people at in Bible studies where I've led worship and the men have said, oh, this is for the women. This is for the Who ladies. Said? And the men will all stand there and nobody <laughs> sings. Well, I'm sorry, but you're a new creation. And guess what? Your whole uh, yeah. your whole life now is worship. Was David? Praise and worship. What was he doing in, with the sheep all day? He was <laughs> singing, writing songs, praising God. Well, as king, I mean, he danced down the street mm -hmm. yeah. in the city. But that's just for the women. Well, his, yeah, that's his, the, like the Lord has been asking me lately is who told you that? See, when, they, when a lie comes that? or when we think it's hard yeah. or we think that this sickness is this little and this sickness is big, you know, who says? Yeah. yeah. Not the word of God. No. Nope. Yeah. So who else then? So yeah. how do we get yeah. our minds to make this automatic? We kind of do what John did. So let's go to Joshua Ooh, 1, 8. Good. We're going to look at meditation. Ooh. So we are to meditate on three things. Ooh. So number one is in Joshua 1, 8. I'm going the wrong way. That's okay. It's in the Bible. We're going right Joshua way. 1, 8. And it says, This book of the law, which now is the word, the Bible, shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So the number one thing we're supposed to meditate on is the Word of God. Mm. Like John, he was listening to all those in him scriptures, and then he was just thinking about it. Yeah. He was just mulling it over in his brain, just what thinking about God it. What God has said about me. Yeah. What God says wow. is true in my life. Oh. Because I, I can't expect God to come down. I've got to go to him, so I've got to find out what he said about me. Mm -hmm. what's true in the realm of the spirit because if i go where god is what he says about me will come to pass in my life yeah Man, i have written here so that good. meditating increases your capacity to <gasps> see Ooh. wow you want to see farther you yes. want to see more meditate it's Ooh. not hard it's yeah. not weird it's meditating it's thinking about it over and over yeah so then the second thing we're supposed to think about let's go to psalms one the witch doctors two. They meditate to put curses on people, and they actually are getting a little bit of results. Ooh, more yeah. than some Christians. How much more? I mean, this is what they would do. They'd take their chair, they'd get away from everybody. You know, mm -hmm. somebody paid them to put a curse or do a certain thing on somebody. So they take their chair, and they go off by themselves, and this is before sunlight. They said that so many Christians, this is one that became a Christian, he's a pastor now. They said Christians are too lazy. They're so lazy. He said he would go before sunrise. He said the meditation works when you're consistent in it. Yeah. You do it consistently. 
He would go off by himself before the sunrise, and he would make a covenant with the sun. It's such a powerful thing, but so twisted and wrong. You know, it's a twist of what, if, hmm. if it, it wouldn't work if there wasn't some thing to it. And he'd make a covenant with the sun. He First he'd meditate on that there's what he's about to say coming to pass. Wow. What his words taking hold. And he made a covenant with the sun. If you come up this morning... And what I say is going to come to pass. Wow. So much banked on wow. what he's saying coming wow. to pass. What he believed, he said, <laughs> would come to pass. You know, and that yeah. meditating gets your beliefs right. Yeah. And wow. we do this all the time. And I've heard several ministers, faith school, Keith Moore talked about it. Uh, uh, Charles Capps talking about it. You know, there's a big dog. Oh, isn't that just a little dog? Or somebody does something mean. Oh, oh great. And training ourselves to not mean what we say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. in the belief, the faith. Be- I've yeah. heard it all over the place. All over. I've heard it come out my mouth even recently. And I'm thinking to myself, I've got to change that if I want my words to be effective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, which do doctor's that. not going to do that? No. He wants his words to be effective. That's right. Yeah. Wow. And when you do that, you believe everything you're saying then. Now you have to be watchful with what you say. Yeah. So the number one thing we're supposed the number one thing we meditate on is the word of God. Number two is the ways of God. Ooh. And then number three is who he is and his character. Ooh. So if you're like, I don't know what to meditate on, maybe a scripture didn't pop out at you that day, meditate on those three things. Yeah. That's so good. On the ways of God and who he is, his character. So when I was looking up meditating, a lot of them were in the Psalms. What was David doing all day in yeah. that uh-huh. with those sheep? He was he wasn't thinking about that sheep dumb. Hmm, that sheep's fat today. No, he was thinking about all the things of God. He was meditating. He wow. was worshiping. He was thinking about God, writing about God, singing about God all day. Wow. And that changed his whole life. Wow. So Psalms 1 and verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Mm. It's an all-the-time thing. Yeah. If we could be thinking about the most random things all day. We could just be thinking about how somebody hurt us. We could be worrying about something all day. Change that. See? Yes. Yep. Yes. Use that yep. same mental yep. energy. It's the same mental energy. Same. Think about God. Yeah. 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 I liked what Tad said. He said, get distracted by Jesus today. Yeah. And you, have you ever, like, just sat there and daydreamed? Do that. Put on the Word of God. That's so yeah. Good. On who He is. On His so character. good. Do you guys, okay, think... You guys might have to help me with this. Think about uh, Jesse Duplantis. Okay. His vision of heaven. He went to heaven. Okay. He talked to David. Okay. And David, he talked to David about the Psalms. And Psalms, uh, and David said something about, it, uh, a lot of them I wrote because of the circumstances in, but then some of them I wrote, and how did he word this? Yeah, I don't remember Because that. of the Spirit influencing me. He said, I wish I would have done more of those. Oh. Or I let the Spirit of God influence me. Oh. Versus just doing it on his circumstances. Hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, just think of what time that he was. He was in the Old Testament. Yeah. And, I mean, it was just unheard of. He was breaking ground here mm-hmm. wow. with how he was led of God and just, wow. Mm-hmm. Meditation, when you say meditation, a lot of people think of a lot of different things. They think of home. They think of <laughs> clear your mind. Oh, so this is the different ty- types of meditation. So okay. Eastern meditation, which is emptying the mind. That one is dangerous. Mm. Because when you empty the mind, you're letting, you're giving room for evil spirits to come in That's there. Right. Don't do that. Don't That's do like that. like getting all the bats out of your attic, but then you leave the window open again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not smart. Western meditation, which is a lot of what we have here, there'll be inspirational speakers that will say, meditate, which is your focusing and your mental focus. So envision yourself going through the door. Envision yourself being successful, handsome, happy, those types of things. Now, those aren't all bad. Those can be good. Yes, we're supposed to take our mind and think on the good things, but biblical meditation is thinking and resting on who God is. All the other meditations want you to become empty, but God wants you to become full. He wants your mind to be full of this, full of him, full of what you know, full of who you are. Fill that space so that nothing can get in. Well, Jesus' whole identity was the Father. Yeah. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I speak the Father's words. I do it. I've seen my Father do it. Everything, his identity was a father. 
And so now our identity, if you look at the scriptures in the New Testament, it says that we would be in his image and yeah. likeness. We were created in Genesis to be just like him. Yes. Them. Yeah. yeah. A Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And that has not changed. So our whole thing right now is to uh, to meditate on him so we're like him. Yeah. If you think of like an Elvis impersonator or just an impersonator, what do they do yes. to look Study. just like who yes. they're going to be? Yes. Yes. They, yeah. you know, they watch it. Cost. I do some of this when we do some of the impersonations and impressions for like blasts and stuff. I'll look at that. I want to see that accent. I want to see, sometimes there's a character that I'm following, and I want to see, and I listen to that. He did something funny when he said that word. There was something at the end of that word, and I'll yeah. practice doing We could do that with God. Man, yeah. what does he do with his words? Yes. What does he say? Wow. You know what I thought about? There's an aspect of Jesus that we only think about at Christmas. They call him the Prince of Peace. Ooh. Jesus never was without peace. Wow. And that's our example. That's Prince, our example. Prince of Peace. Oh, praise you know, God. somewhere... And he brings peace. Wow. Man, we need to be that peace when yes. we go somewhere. Flipping over those temple tables, running out those money changers, that brought peace. He was bringing peace. He was peace. bringing peace. Wow. So if we don't have peace and we have unrest, discontent, not satisfied, frustrated, yeah. discouraged, we have lost the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Whoa. You know what, too? You can have peace when everyone else is having hell on earth. Yes. Think about a boat, and everyone's afraid of dying because they're in a storm, and Jesus gets up, and he goes, come on, you guys. Yeah. And he rebukes the circumstances, and yeah. he says, peace. Wow. Why? Because he's the Prince of Peace. Praise God. When there's a storm in our lives, yeah. and we've taught on this, Woo! and we've heard some of it, where they looked at the radar, and they saw something coming. And I think we need to press into this sometimes. Yes. And they've spoken, and they've watched that storm split wow. and go around. Praise we've God. had a little bit. We've had once or twice where we yep. were pressing in just a little bit, and we come back down. We've had, we've seen it go around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've seen it where it's going to be 90, it's going to be 90 the next day, and then Sunday's coming, it goes down to 70. We just yep. had that happen we for our program. We just had that happen. We pressed through that in yep. prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many areas could we have peace mm -hmm. when yes. everyone else had problems? Wow. Gas prices. Now, you know, either way God wants to do it, whether the prices change in your town, or maybe you've got money and people don't, extra to pay, yeah. not a problem. Peace. Praise Peace. God. Man. Not troubled. You're, you're not, you're not thoughtful, regardless of circumstances. Yeah. Like, circumstances can go like this, and you stay even. Man. Yeah. Mm. Because yep. you're filling your mind with him. And you know what? God loves that because you're giving place to him That's to move right. in a great oh, and mighty yes. way. Why? Because he wants the unsaved. He wants other people to see what a blessing it is yes. to be a child yes. of God. Yep. Yeah, Man, exactly. That's so good. Yeah. What, when, a testimony. what a yeah. testimony. What a witness. Wow. Yes. What in the world? Why are you going to listen to somebody who what they're saying doesn't bear any fruit in their life? Yes. They fall in the same problems and everyone around them. They say, oh, God will help you. No, there ought to be a difference, or I'm not going to follow them. There should be right. a difference. Bible says, follow those who, through faith and patience, that they're inheriting, they're having fruit. Yeah. yeah. We're supposed to follow people like yes. that. Yes. What sets yep. us apart from the world if we're just talking as negative as the world is? Yeah. If we're living as negative as the world is? Yeah. When you listen to the voice of the problem more than the voice of the Lord, faith will always be an uphill battle. Wow. Say that's, that that's again. Good. When yep. you listen to the voice of the Problem more than the voice of the Lord, faith will always be an <laughs> uphill battle. Wow. Wow. So, so if faith struggling. is an so uphill good. battle, you know what you're listening to. You're looking yeah. at the problem. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Wow. You're not say it again. Yeah. If you listen to the voice of the problem more than the voice of the Lord, faith yeah. will always be an uphill battle. What? I mean, so then if, that's you, awesome. if you receive awesome. your counsel so by the difficulties in your life, your heart your heart will be shaped by inferior things and will bring you confusion. Wow. If you're listening to the counsel of difficulties. Wow. Like difficulties are telling you what to do. Oh, this problem came up, so now I have to change and do this. Then your heart's going to be shaped by that, and it's going to be inferior, and it's going to bring confusion. Yeah. You're not insulated yet. No. That's like a storm comes, your doors are open, your windows are open, and water's coming in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're going to be shaped by that. It's going to warp things on your house. It's going to hurt things. It's going to get water damaged. But 
When you listen to the voice of the Lord more, yes. when that's louder, Praise when your mind God. is so full Thank of Him, you, Lord. nothing else can get in. Yes, you know, it's been Woo! proven out. It's it's uh, it's been proven out that your life will head in the direction of your predominant thoughts. Yep. They say that the uh, um, the six or ten people that you're the closest to, you're gonna your 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 income's gonna be within ten percent of that. It's wow. been proven out. Yeah. Wow. It matters what you focus on. It yes. does. Because your design, that your spirit, what your spirit latches onto, every part of your being is going to gravitate and pull on whatever's around you until you achieve that. It's the goal setter inside of you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So your words can change your thoughts. Hmm. That's, That's awesome. so good. And it meditation is, has God. to do not just with your mind, but yeah. with your mouth. With yeah. your mouth. You, can, you meditate with your mouth. And you're saying, have you ever been so worried about a problem that you're just just thinking about that so hard that somebody says, hello, like they're talking yeah. to you. They're going to talk to you for about five minutes yes. and you're like, oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. You can do that same thing, yeah. but filled with God. Yep. Yeah. Everybody can him. relate to that. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, Everybody can, can think to a point, and it yes. might have been five minutes ago, about something you're worried about, that churning. You're capable of doing that, like you said. Yes. Yeah. It's the same mental effort. So really quickly, we're going to go to uh, Genesis 24, and we're going to look at what happens when you meditate, and your mind is so full of him, and you're listening to God every step of the way. So when you meditate, when you live in union and in prayer, you get inside and future information. Wow. Then we won't live in reaction to the problems as they happen, because we have an advantage. Yep. We know before. That's God's going good. to give us tools. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. So that's what happened here in Genesis 24. And we're going to look at verse 63. So this is about Isaac. This was about his future. Your future is very important to God. Mm. So Isaac is single here. And Isaac came from the way of the well of, mm -hmm, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even time. And he lifted up his eyes. And there he saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Now, he, he's, this is about camels. There's a certain girl on those camels. <laughs> and Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the candle. <laughs> Camel, oh, no. oh, my prince! <laughs> she was there. For she had said unto the servant, Servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. <laughs> so the servant went and found Rebecca and said, This is the one for Isaac. And Isaac brought her unto his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. I gotta do some more meditating. Yeah, you gotta do some meditating. <laughs> when you meditate on God, he gives you the plan. Amen. Isaac wasn't going around going, hmm, is that the one? Hmm. No, he sent certain He wasn't on any his... dating websites either. No, he wasn't on <laughs> Tinder swiping left or right. No, ugly, cute, cute. No, we have an advantage. To pray in advance. Yeah. That's yes. awesome. And when you meditate, you get the plan in advance. Yes. So prayer makes an exchange. Prayer takes on the heart of God, and then it sees things from his perspective. Mm. That's the whole purpose of yes. prayer. If yes, you so leave good. prayer feeling the same way you went in, you didn't pray, you were complaining. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, you want to say that again? Whoa. When you leave if prayer. you leave prayer feeling the same way you went in, you didn't pray, you were complaining. Yeah, it probably felt worse than when you went in. Yeah. Ouch. Wow. Because prayer makes an exchange. You take on the perspective of God, That's which is yeah. Yeah. it's done, yeah. he's That's got good. the plan, you've got the plan, and if you stay with him, he's gonna fulfill that plan. Yeah. Isaac here wasn't freaking out. He sent out his servants who did the whole thing for him. And then he was just doing what he was supposed to do. We sent out servants to do stuff for us. We have faith servants. Didn't you say he was 40 at the time? I, oh, see, see, see. Uh -huh. So if you have things in your future that you want to happen or that you need to happen, meditate. Be in prayer. Get yourself lined up. Do the thing still. What do what do servants do when they're waiting? No, wait. What, what do waiters know? Yeah. How does that go? What do waiters do, do when, when they, they wait? wait? They, they serve. serve. That was hard. Oh, <laughs> I like that. That's awesome. And we are to wait 
on the Lord. That's not just like, okay, I'm going to sit here and just sit by the window in my castle, just waiting for my prince to come. No, it's like a waiter. We're going to wait on Woo! him. We're going to serve God with all we have. That's because good. we want to be running so hard and so fast with God that the things in our future have to run and catch up to us. Yeah. So that's the best place to be in. Wasn't yeah. one of you two that said that? when uh, That you want to be so close to God and so pressing into him that your spouse has to follow God to find you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's so good. Exactly. So when you do that, you pray your future. I remember Keith Moore said... The main reason he wanted to be spirit-filled and speak in tongues was he heard somebody preaching on that when you speak in tongues, you're praying your future. And he's like, I want that. I want to pray my future. Yeah. So when you do that, you're not only edifying yourself, you're not only putting yourself one with God, you're praying your future out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so awesome. Wow. And then regardless of circumstances, you're going to be so insulated by God that you're going to just be meditating in the field and you're going to look up and here comes your train of camels holding all the stuff you've been praying for. <laughs> Praise God. That's awesome. So good. Camel train of blessing. <laughs> that yeah. is so good. Wow. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Wow, I'm pumped up, man. Woo! I know. Wow. I'm ready to like, that like is take a awesome. Thank Praise you, Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. Well, Praise God. we will be back. Yes. Sunday morning, 11 a.m. on live, in person, 10.30 a.m., Continental Breakfast. Yep. Join us. We'd love and to we'll have we'll be in Tinta at 3 yep. in the afternoon, and your kiddos would love to come and see the pirates and the puppets and be in kids' theater and play laser tag. Woo! Yay! Well, God bless you. We love you. Bye. Bye guys.